Hello. In this video, we're going to look at part four of the reading and use of English paper for Cambridge first exams. This part is called the keyword transformation exercise. It is quite difficult, but with the right approach, you'll be able to get as many points as possible. So first, a couple of basic instructions. As always, with the use of English paper, remember, write your answers clearly in pencil in capital letters on the answer sheet. You don't want to lose points simply because the examiners can't read your answer. Secondly, there may be more than one answer available for these. But don't give all the different possibilities. Choose one answer that fits and write that on your answer sheet. Read the instructions very carefully. It says at the top of the page, first of all, do not change the word given. So don't do that. And secondly, you must use between two and five words. And this includes the word that's given to you. Contractions, as we saw in part two, the open close, count as two words. So remember to include that in your calculations. And also remember that simple things like articles also count as a word. So what is this test about? Well, um, as well as being a grammar test, it's a vocabulary test, a set expression uh, test. There are two points available for each of these questions. And generally, that will mean that there are two changes to take into consideration. Now, it might seem like a lot, but it's possible to get one point out of the two. So it's always worth a go. If you get half of the answer correct, you'll still get a point, even if you've made a mistake somewhere else. So never look at it and just give up completely. Always look for at least one of these changes. What kind of changes could these be? Well, the most common sort of things would be to go from the active voice, I eat cake, to the passive, the cake is eaten. Maybe going from direct speech to reported speech, I want a cake, he said. He told me he wanted a cake, that sort of example. And maybe from a single verb to a phrasal verb. So, I'd like to try this exercise now. Follow the link in the description below to download the PDF, or if you've already got it, that's great. Go straight to page 23 in the PDF file and have a look at this. And I'll be waiting here for you in a couple of minutes. Good luck. Okay, so now you've had a look at this keyword transformation exercise, let's go through the answers together. Now the answers are all given on the answer sheet later in the PDF, and if you'd like to go straight there and figure things out for yourself, by all means, please do that. But we're going to look at where the answers come from, so hopefully you'll find something useful here. For number 25, we had the keyword forward. And when you can't wait to hear something, you're looking forward to something. So that should give us the answer pretty quickly. We want looking forward to hearing. So we have two changes. We've got can't wait going to looking forward, and we've got here from the first sentence going to to hearing. Two changes, two points. For number 26, when something is pointless, you can't see the point of doing it. So our answer is see the point of buying. Now if you look at the answer sheet you'll find that there are a few other acceptable options here. So if you have something different you're not necessarily wrong. I recommend you have a look at the answer sheet to see what other possibilities there were. But coming back to this, so we've changed um, pointless to see the point and buying a daily newspaper to in or of buying a daily newspaper. So again, two changes. For number 27, we have a comparative, be more expensive. And if we go from more expensive to not, we're going to make a direct comparison with not as, hmm, as. So the flight was not as expensive. So again, the two changes, the flight would be becomes the flight was not. And instead of more expensive, we have as expensive. So two changes. 
For number 28, we need the keyword could. So, it's a shame I'm not able to come, shows regret. Regret gives us immediately a kind of conditional structure. Here, we're not going to use a full if structure, but we can use half of one with I wish. So the answer is, wish I could come. If you've got I wish that I could come, that's also correct. But here, that isn't necessary because the subject is the same. I wish I could come. We don't need that, it's not essential, but you won't lose a mark if you wrote it. For number 29, we need the keyword sold. If we look at the first sentence, it shows that there were no trainers left. If there were no trainers left, they must have sold out. So the answer is, the website had sold out of trainers in Denzel's size. If you want, you could write completely sold out of the trainers, for example, but you don't have to. And then finally for number 30, if you do something by accident, you didn't mean to do it. Mean here means the same as intend. So Gwenda didn't mean to delete her sister's photographs. So there's a lot going on in each of these sentences. And apart from knowing generally what you need to do, there is one little exam technique that you could use if it will help you in the future. When you look at the first sentence, go through and see which words are repeated in the sentence beneath. So for example, uh, we have Gwenda deleted her sister's photographs by accident, in number 30. And in the second part, we have Gwenda, then the gap, her sister's photographs. So if we cross out her sister's photographs in the first part, it just shows deleted by accident. So that's the language that changes, and that's the language we need to change. So if it helps, you could do that. Remember, you can do what you like to the exam paper. It will be destroyed after the exam. So on the question paper, not the answer sheet, but the question paper, you can do whatever you need to. Write on it, cross out words, it doesn't matter. So try that, maybe. If you struggled with this exercise, find another example and start using that technique of crossing out the words that repeat between the first and second uh, sentence. Okay, well that's the end of our use of English part of the reading and use of English paper. Next time we'll be moving on to part five, which is the multiple choice reading task. Thank you.